So what I wanted to talk about was about being in balance financially. You know, you were talking about being in balance financially, being in balance time-wise with the gentleman before me. So I guess, and, and it's something I'm working on. And we yeah. want to call your attention to where satisfied and dissatisfied are. They're right in the center of the fulcrum in that perfect balance where it could go either way. It could easily tip this way or this way. Let's just acknowledge together for a minute that my quest, meaning you, my quest for satisfaction is the key to all balance in my life. Time balance, people balance, financial balance, because I'm the balancer, nothing else is. There are no factors other than what I think that have anything to do with what goes on with me. There are no outside influences, it's all inside influences. So if I find that satisfaction balance and then I think about finances, then I don't worry about money because I can't worry about money and be satisfied at the same time. And I can't really appreciate the money that I don't have without noticing that I don't have it. So that's not the key. So I just do my best to be satisfied where I am. I'm doing good and it's getting better. Right, right. I agree with that. I'm practicing that. Okay, so what about this feeling of deprivation or sacrifice? It seems like to get... Well, we just have one first question. Yeah. Is that a satisfying feeling? Of course not. Of course it isn't. It seems like, especially like around money, maybe that to get into balance. But you're missing the whole point of what we are wanting you to understand. Of course, all of those feelings you have and they're legitimate feelings and of course you have them and momentum is taking them there. But you can't get to where you want to be by addressing those feelings. You just can't get there. You can just poke around. We could write 400 processes around those feelings and you just pretty much stay right there. Ask your question again. Okay, so the question is, how do you find balance without and around, let's say financially, for example, without feeling that you have to deprive yourself or experience struggle or effort? First of all, feeling like you have to deprive yourself is as far out of balance as not feeling like you have enough money. Satisfied and then there's deprivation. Satisfied and then there's sacrifice. None of that works. Now ask another question. Well, how do I not feel those feelings? Well, take a nap. And when you wake up, try to think a thought that doesn't feel like that. Use the power of your mind. Use the discipline of your mind to reach for satisfaction instead of going into those lazy thoughts that you've thought your whole life. But don't do it the hard way, do it the easy way. Do it from here, not from here. That really is the key because all of your questions are coming from way over here. How do I get to where I want to be from way over here? And we say, well, you can do it, but it's harder. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it seems to me like getting in balance. Okay, this is it. It's so we have a game. <laughs> it's in the Ask and It Is Given book and it's the perfect game for what you're reaching for here. And as we tell you this game, we are then going to tell you how this game applies to the satisfaction factor. So the game is this. So I acknowledge that I'm out of balance and I'm worried about money and I'm also frustrated because there's so much I want to do that I can't do. So I feel bound by my inability to get more money and I'm mad at myself a little bit and mostly I just don't understand and therefore I'm frustrated. And so I'm sort of even mad at Abraham who acts like I can do anything I want and I haven't been doing what I want. So there's where I sit. So here's the game. Get a columnar pad, as many columns as you need. Esther started with one that had 24 columns on it. Great big columnar pad. And so we asked Esther and the friend that she was counseling financially at the time, make an assessment of where you stand financially. And so we asked the question, what is the payment that you make that is the biggest every month? And this person said, house payment. So I had them write house payment and wrote what the amount of the payment was. What's next? Car payment. What's next? Insurance payment. What's next? 
Credit card payment. What's next? Credit card payment. What's next? Credit card payment. What's next? Credit card payment. What's next? Credit card payment. What's next? Credit card payment. What's next? Credit card payment. What's next? Credit card payment. What's next? Utility. What's next? Water. What's next? Telephone. What's next? And so they pretty much filled up 24 columns on the columnar pad. And then we said, write this statement across the top. These are my commitments to the financial world. I've made these commitments. And I intend to do my best to make all of these payments every month, and in some cases, do twice as much as I said I would. So we said, write that, and they did. And then we said, what is on the far right column? What's the smallest column? It was a bicycle that they had purchased from Montgomery Ward, and the bicycle payment was $14 a month. So we said, do you think that you could pay all of these? And they said, no, I can't pay them all. We said, can you pay the minimum payments on all of them? They said, no. And we said, which one of these would cause you the least trouble if you didn't pay it? And they said, that credit card and that credit card and that credit card, because they seemed to like me to get my balance high. So they'll just charge me extra interest, but no terrible repercussion will come. So I said, all right. We would encourage you to write two checks to Montgomery Ward, make two bicycle payments. And they said, that seems weird. Why would I do that when I can't do that? And we said, because you can't do that anyway. But you can find $14 over there. So just do it. And when you do it, say to yourself, I did twice as much as I said I would. And then we said, way back then, feel the satisfaction of that. I did twice as much as I said I would. And we said, play this game and watch what happens. So they played the game and here's what happened. A little more money came, they made a little more payments. But the big thing that happened was instead of going to the mailbox with trepidation and fear, instead of stacking up the bills and not wanting to open them, within a very short time, it became a game. It became a game of satisfaction. It became a game of looking forward to what was coming to see what I could do with this game. Feelings of deprivation were nowhere around. Instead, a feeling of accomplishing or playing successfully this game took the place. And so many people at that time began playing that game. It was 10 years ago, began playing that game and began receiving the feeling of satisfaction from it. And little did they know that a feeling of satisfaction is the key to opening the door. Because when you feel satisfied because you've done something so silly seeming as making two bicycle payments, when there were other payments that you were having a hard, who knew that that feeling of satisfaction would then open the door and make you then more receptive, have better timing, be in the right place at the right time. Avenues of financial gain became apparent to them that were not apparent to them before because in satisfaction they were in the receiving mode while in dissatisfaction they had that door closed we're not kidding you it will seem like magic it will feel fun to you you will feel the satisfaction of it and it will tip the balance of where you are and it takes so little to tip the balance in order to make a big difference in what happens when you allow yourself access to the leverage of the energy of the universe that creates worlds when you just let that door open on your behalf just a little bit big things happen in your experience and if you do less than that if you hold yourself in virtuous dissatisfaction as you face the fact of your financial insecurity you can't get ahead ever you just work harder and longer you say things to us like the more I make the more I spend I just can't get ahead I just can't get ahead when you can you can It's an emotional shift. It's not an action shift. It's an emotional shift. It's a determination because the emotion is the indicator of the vibration. And we're talking to you about you being the creator of your experience, but we're not talking to you about the action part of your experience. We're talking to you about the vibrational turning thoughts to things part of it. And so when we offer you a process like this, that shifts your vibration just a little bit, 
puts you more in the receptive mode then as these thoughts are turning to things it won't be long before you're out there in the action part of it manifesting all of that but it's like you got to put the seed in the ground first and you got to tend to it first and it's gonna come up and it's not gonna have any money on its ears yet it's just gonna be a little plant that doesn't have any corn on it yet but in time if you tend to it enough if you are satisfied enough that you'll go water it then you'll tend to it and that you'll believe in it before you know it it will be productive in your experience in the way that you now want it to be and your disappointment we love you so much your disappointment is that it's not showing you everything you want in terms of manifestation now that's not how it works it will show you in the vibrational phase but you've got to be tuned to be happy with what you're seeing vibrationally you've got to be happy with the feeling not need the money before you're happy you got to be happy with the feeling you got to be happy that you can be satisfied and then you begin to notice that a balanced budget is both money in and money out it's what's coming in for sure it is and more and more will come but it's also what's going out and so many people are spending money because they think that's the way to satisfaction they think just buying one more thing and bringing it home will make them feel satisfied for a moment it might give you a little feeling of relief and it might distract you from things that are bothering you but it is not the long-standing feeling shift in vibration and therefore shift in feeling that you're looking for mm -hmm. so in terms of the outgo how would you approach uh, well i guess I was gonna say how would you approach that it's you're saying it's not an action so it's not about depriving yourself of things that you want but in effect ultimately you will perhaps have to stop spending you as much are you saying it'll naturally happen? what we're saying is you can stop spending for a minute and still be satisfied and if you can be satisfied even though you've stopped spending for a minute you'll catch your balance but it's not about the action it's about the satisfaction don't look for satisfaction through action look for satisfaction through thought because you can find it every single time if you will look just a little bit Esther was on an airplane she got up at four o'clock in the morning she got into her car she drove through heavy traffic interstate 10 has been under construction it took an hour and 15 minutes to get to the airport when she got to the airport it was raining she did not have an umbrella she still got on that airplane and found satisfaction you see what we're talking about she's not demanding that every moment of her life be perfect in every way she's just looking for as much satisfaction as she can find the man at the baggage claim walked her in with a box over her head people are just looking for ways to make her life better everywhere she goes but her life is not always perfect there are things that she would like to be different she really doesn't like to set her alarm for three o'clock in the morning to leave the house for four o'clock in the morning to catch a flight that's at six o'clock in the morning in other words there are many other things that she might like to do but you know what the satisfaction of this makes all of that not matter this satisfaction is so great you see and so she doesn't lie in bed and think oh it's probably going to be raining or the traffic's probably going to be blocked up she just accommodates to make herself as comfortable as she can be she gets to the airport early enough that she knows that she won't have to scramble she looks for reasons to be satisfied and finds them 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 and finds them, and finds them, and finds them when there are plenty of reasons maybe even more that she could pinpoint that would not be satisfying but not satisfaction doesn't lead her to alignment and not being in alignment doesn't lead her to this kind of satisfaction you see what we're getting at you just have to decide that it's all up to you the way you feel is all up to you and that you can find satisfaction and then it will lead to more and more and more and more and more people watch Esther and they think well of course you're satisfied you're wealthy Esther is wealthy of course you're satisfied you're wealthy of course you can fly first class and if Esther really wanted to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with you in your dissatisfied analogy she would say I still had to get up and make the flight I still had to find a way to get to the airport I'm just not magically appearing at the airport yet I haven't been that satisfied <laughs> but who cares where you are if you're satisfied while you're going who cares what you're doing or who you're doing it with if you've mastered the art of satisfaction wouldn't you love to not need to make demands of the world that it will never make to you wouldn't you just like to be satisfied without needing your government or anybody to be different than it is in order for you to feel well-being aren't you looking for that 
Don't you want to love your kids while they're finding their way? Don't you want to feel satisfied even though they won't do what you think they need to do in order for them to live the productive life that you've chosen for them? Satisfaction is every single thing you want, no matter what it is, a material object, a pile of money, a relationship, everything that you want is because you believe you will feel better in the having of it. And we are here to say to you, you've got to find a way to feel better in the not having of it before it can come. You've got to find a way to feel satisfied. Otherwise, the big stuff will never come to you.